we have seen earlier that processes may communicate with each other when they are sharing information or data. One such example is the producer-consumer problem. We have a producer process which is producing some information and storing it in a buffer and we have a consumer process which accesses the information or data produced by the producer and uses it. So suppose this is the code for the producer process and this is the code for the consumer process. This buffer over here can be implemented as a circular queue with two pointers in and out. The in pointer is specifying or representing the first available space in the buffer where the producer pr process can put the next produced data. The out pointer is used by the consumer process and which specifies or represents the first space in the buffer from where the consumer can access or pull out data. So let's take a look at the producer process first. We have a variable count which specifies the number of items produced by the producer and available in the buffer. The size of this buffer is buff size. This is the variable we are using here. So if the count is equal to buff size, that means if the number of items which have been produced by the producer process, they are equal to the size of the buffer, that means the buffer is full and in that case, the producer process is not supposed to do anything. If not, then the producer process will produce some information and let's say that information is stored in a structure variable next produced and this next produced uh, information is put in the buffer at the pointer specified by the in uh, variable and the in variable it is incremented by 1 and this is modulo buff size because we are implementing it as a circular queue and this is a standard that is used for circular queues. Also the count is incremented by 1 because the producer has produced one more item and this count is specifying the number of items which are available in the buffer. Now let's take a look at the consumer process. While the count is equal to 0, the consumer is not supposed to do anything. That means count is 0 specifies that no items are available in the buffer and if there are no items then the consumer process cannot consume anything. Else what the consumer process will do is take out the information from the buffer from the pointer pointed out by the out and that will be the next consumed uh, that this information can be put in the next consumed which again is a structure variable used by the consumer process and the out pointer will also be incremented by 1 and the count variable will be decremented by 1 because the consumer has consumed one item from the buffer. So if we see, we can see that both the processes, the producer process and the consumer process, they are using a shared variable count. So the count is being used by the producer process and being incremented and once the consumer process consumes one item from the buffer, it decrements that count. So if let's say the count is initialized at 5, the producer process will increment it and the consumer process will decrement it. So in one cycle, what will be the value of the count variable? So if the producer process uh, increments it, this becomes 6 and then the consumer process decrements it so it becomes 5 again. So this should be the final value. But we will see that the way the, these instructions are in executed, this value could either be 4 or it could be 6 as well. Let's see how that happens. When this in high level language instruction is executed, this actually when it is broken down into the the assembly language instructions or the way it is executed is in this manner. There is this count variable 
विच इज स्टोर्ड इन सम मेमरी एड्रेस लेट से एक्स फ्रॉम दैट मेमरी एड्रेस इट विल बी पिक्ड अप एंड इट विल बी टेकन टू अ सी पी यू रजिस्टर लेट से आर वन देन द सी पी यू रजिस्टर वैल्यू विल बी इंक्रीमेंटेड बाय वन इन द अरेथमेटिक एंड लॉजिक यूनिट ऑफ द प्रोसेसर एंड द न्यू वैल्यू विल बी केप्ट इन द रजिस्टर आर वन ऑफ द प्रोसेसर एंड देन फाइनली दैट अपडेटेड आर वन वैल्यू वुड बी टेकन टू द मेमरी एड्रेस सो दिस इज हाउ दिस काउंट वैल्यू विल बी इंक्रीमेंटेड सिमिलरली हाउ विल दिस बी डेक्रीमेंटेड अगेन इफ वी लुक एट हाउ दिस इंस्ट्रक्शन विल बी एग्जीक्यूटेड एट द मशीन लेवल इट विल बी पिक्ड अप फ्रॉम द मेमरी एड्रेस टेकन टू अ प्रोसेसर रजिस्टर आर टू दिस प्रोसेसर रजिस्टर नाउ विल बी डेक्रीमेंटेड बाय वन इन अगेन द ए एल यू सेक्शन ऑफ द प्रोसेसर and the updated value will be put in the processor register r2 and from there it will be taken back to the memory address of the count variable so now if the producer process runs first followed by the consumer process so we are saying that we are having the process p1 which is the producer process being executed first and then the consumer process being executed next so when the count is taken to r1 this becomes 5 the value 5 goes into register r1 then it will be incremented by 1 so this and updated into the register so this will become 6 and this value r1 will be taken to the memory address so now in the memory address this value will now become 6 now the when the consumer process runs the count value will be taken to register r2 so 6 will be coming into register r2 now it will be decremented by 1 as seen over here and the updated value is put in register r2 again on and from there it is sent back to the memory address over here in the memory so the final value we see of this shared variable count is 5 this is when p1 is being followed by p2 so the final value over here becomes 5 similarly if p2 runs first followed by p1 then we can see again that the count value would be 5 first it will be decremented so 5 would be decremented to 4 by the p2 process and then it will be incremented again back to 5 by the producer process so the final value of the count variable would again be 5 now let's see what happens if while the instructions for this particular high level language instruction was happening while these instructions were being executed let's say there is a context switch between the two processes so let's take a look at this let's see that first processor p1 was running and count was loaded into r1 so 5 was loaded into r1 now at this point in time there is a context switch and now the produce the consumer process which is p2 now this starts running so count is loaded into r2 we see that the count value has still not been updated by p1 because it was preempted and the count value in the memory address is still 5 so this would be loaded into r2 the it would be decremented to 4 and it will be put back into the memory address of count so this becomes 4 over here now again there is a context switch over here and p1 starts running again what happens now the count is incremented by 1 in the p1 process the p1 process is using this register r1 so it increments the count and makes it 6 we see over here that this p1 process is still using the old value which was put in the r1 register when it was running initially so after incrementing the value of count now this new value is put back in the memory address so now the memory address the final value that is in the count variable that is 6 which is incorrect similarly let us see what will happen if the consumer process is running first so 
the count value which was 5 is loaded into R2. Now there is a context switch and P1 process starts running. The P1 process still sees the original value 5. So it loads 5 into R1. It increments it and stores it into the memory address of count. So count is 6. Now when P2 starts running back after a context switch over here, P2 already has loaded the value of count in its register R2 where it is decremented and now put back into the memory address of count. So the final value in this case is 4 which again is incorrect. So this happened because the way this instruction is being executed it was preempted in without being completed uh, completely. So that means that one particular section of updating of this data, it this should be done without preemption from any other process. So we have seen now that this concurrent access to, to the shared data, this resulted in data inconsistency. And the final results were dependent on the context switching and the execution of the instructions. So this is referred to as a race condition and this is a situation where multiple processes they are accessing and manipulating the same data. And this part of the code is referred to as the critical section. So here as we have seen the updation of the count variable over here which was the shared data. This is the critical section of the producer process and the consumer process and the final result depended on the order of the data access, whether the producer process accessed it first or the consumer process access, accessed it. Now this race condition can be prevented by synchronization. That means we have to ensure that the cooperating processes, that means the processes which are communicating with each other, they are accessing this data in an orderly fashion and this will ensure that only one process manipulates the critical section at a time. So only when that count variable has been completely updated either by the producer process or by the consumer process, then only the other process should be allowed to enter the or manipulate the critical section. So we have seen that cooperating processes may have a critical section segment of the code. Here they might be changing the common variables or updating a table or writing into a file. So this critical section, it should be ensured that only one process is using it at a time. So if we see that if one process is in the critical section, then at that point no other process should be in the critical section. So what should be the general structure of any process? If we have a critical section over here, then there should be an entry section which will ensure that there is some kind of restriction now to enter into this critical section and once a process has entered the critical section, no other process should be allowed to enter. Only when one process has finished doing its work in the critical section, then there will be an exit section code which will allow the other processes now to enter the critical section and this exit section can be now followed by the rest of the code. So then what is the solution to the critical section problem? We have three requirements over here which will solve this critical section problem. One is mutual exclusion that means no more than one process can enter the critical section. Second is progress. That means if no process is in the critical section, that means that the critical section is available for any other process to enter. And so if any other process requests entry in the critical section, then that process, the selection of that next process should not be postponed indefinitely. In some one process which wants to enter the critical section should be chosen quickly so that it can enter and do its work in the critical section. So that refers to the progress. Third is bounded weight or no starvation. That means that 
there should be a bound on the number of times one process is allowed to enter the critical section while another process is waiting so that this will cause no starvation and all processes are allowed to enter the critical section in due time.